Hello and welcome back to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. If you're new here, my name is Melissa. I'm a licensed clinical therapist, an LCSW to be specific. Um, I own a private practice, I'm a clinical supervisor, and recently passed my dissertation defense for my PhD in psychology. And I love doing these LCSW videos for you. Um, if you are new here, or even if you're not new here and you've been watching my LCSW test prep series on my channel, then um, I have a LCSW study program entitled Social Work Study with Melissa, and it is available at my website, which can be found um, in the description box down below. And it is a very thorough program that includes a full study guide, a timeline a schedule of how to use the study guide, personal private videos of me walking you through each of the test prep uh, topics um, of concern. And at the end, there is a full 170 LCSW mock exam. I'm, I've also included flashcards in there for terminology um, regarding psychotropic medications. And um, again, it is available at my website at the link down below. So if you um, have seen some of my videos and like some of the test prep um, and the way that it's taught. It's taught in a similar fashion, um, more thoroughly, of course, with all of the details that you need to know for the LCSW test prep. So definitely check that out. Um, today we're going to continue on um, another LCSW best question. These are really popular sorts of vignette questions um, that are uh, watched videos um, on my channel. And so a best question, if you're not familiar, is a vignette um, or some sort of case study that is given um, or described. And then at the very end, the question is, what is the best response? And these are challenging questions because all of the responses or options may be answers but it's about the process of elimination and prioritizing. So we really wanna get into the habit of getting into what the test is asking and wants you to know as a clinician. And today we're gonna to get into it. So I have one test prep question and it's a, a little bit more of a complex question. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over that with you today. So something that comes up a lot, I think, um, in therapy personally is when clients ask for advice from their therapist or what should, what would you do? I don't know if you have heard this, if you're a therapist or provide counseling services, a client will come in to see you and maybe you have <clears throat> a good rapport with them already, maybe you don't. And then the, the question, the big question is what's your advice for me or what would you do in my situation? And so I think that this is a really interesting sort of um, phenomenon that goes on in the therapeutic um, dynamic between a client and a therapist because as I always say, and commonly kind of misconstrued, is that therapists are not advice givers. So we want to meet clients where they're at and help them decide what it is ultimately that they want, not give our decision um, or you know, our personal advice about what we think they should do. Um, of course, we can provide psychoeducation about things, but really swaying a client to do something because we personally think it's best for them may not always be the best or actually probably never is really the best sort of situation. I mean, I guess it really depends on each given scenario because every specific case is unique. Um, but anyway, this is a mouthful, so I really want to get into the question. So let's go ahead and take a look. So when it comes to the question, as I normally do, um, I ask that you pause the video here, read the question, and then um, answer the question. Uh, pick the response that you think is the best answer and then play and then see compare it to what the what my answer is. So let's go ahead and get started. A client comes in to meet with her therapist and asks the therapist, oopsie, there's one therapist here, sorry about that, if she should leave her partner of five years. Oh wow. 
So she's asking the, the therapist if she should leave her partner of five years. That's a pretty big ask. Um, the client has shared with the therapist in previous sessions about her on and off again relationship. And ultimately, the therapist personally feels that the client would be better off without their partner. So we all have um, our beliefs and our personal and professional opinions about what may be best for somebody, um, in particular our clients, but that doesn't mean that we tell them what we think is best for them. We want them to come to that decision and that um, option on their own, and if they don't, then um, that's okay because it's, you know, they've come to therapy to seek help about what would ultimately help them make the best decisions. And, if, you know, if we as a therapist are going in there and telling them what we think is best for them, that may also sort of hinder the, the rapport. Or if something goes wrong with the advice that we give them, then they have somebody to blame. And we don't want that. Um, we want them to make decisions on their own, and if something goes wrong, they can reflect on that and then from that experience make different decisions. So what is the best way to respond? So again, we're going back here to that um, best sort of question. All right, option A, ask the client to call their partner during the session to discuss together and have a possible joint couples counseling session with you. So this is not a good answer and the reason being is if you know you've already looked into or studied about um, couples counseling then we know that with couples counseling we want to refer our clients to a new therapist we don't want to be um, the individual therapist and the couples therapist, couples counselor, because <clears throat> if that's the case, then we're already biased with one of the partner's um, experiences and situation. And so we want to give this couple the best, fair, most fair chance by giving them a referral to somebody that is going to be meeting them at the same time and is completely unbiased. So even if you go into the couple uh, as a couples counselor and you've already been seeing one of the partners even if you go into that couples counseling session with the idea of i need to be as unbiased as possible th that's not going to work because you already know and have heard many stories from only one of the partners so that doesn't make it fair to the couple as a whole so for that reason a is not an appropriate answer <clears throat> option b ask the client to elaborate on her concerns well, I think this is a really good option, um, but you know what it says here in the vignette is that the client has already been sharing with the therapist in previous sessions, as we see here in the vignette, um, that they have had um, an on and off again relationship, and it sounds like other details. Um, and so it sounds like she has elaborated already quite a bit. So um, it sounds like a good sort of question to ask or um something to help explore concerns further but let's take a look if there's a better option because again we're looking for the best way to respond and b sounds like it could be a good response but is it the best let's see option c let the client know <laughs> excuse me let the client know that you as her therapist think this is a good idea so um this would be kind of maybe pushing the client in a certain direction right i mean maybe um, we could let the client know that we like her idea and this may be um, an appropriate first step because of all the other things that she's brought into the session. Um, but I want to know if there's a better response because, again, the best way to respond. Um, we want to maybe remind her about what she has brought to the therapy session um, in talking about this relationship. So next option, option D, the last option, reflect on what the client has shared in therapy. Oh, that's a really great part of this, um, of this uh, option here because we're reflecting back, and this is what we do a lot as therapists, is we reflect back on what the client has shared. We wanna take 
past sort of experiences and stories that the client has shared and remind them of that, right? And ask the client if past reflections about her relationship impact her needs and decisions regarding this relationship. This sounds like a very strong answer to me. And the reason being is because we're taking her um, own sorts of memories and reflections on what she's talked about in therapy about the relationship and putting it back on her. We want to redirect. Um, and so because of that, option D sounds like the best way to respond. So B and C, they, these may be good options as well. But again, we're looking for the best way to respond. And if the client is asking um, the therapist if she should leave her partner of five years, and again, the, the therapist has a, a personal opinion, but we want to reflect, let the client reflect on what she shared and if she thinks that that's the best idea for her. So D is going to be your answer. So thank you so much for watching. Um, leave me down in the comment section below um, what answer you chose and why. I'm really interested to hear that. And um, let me know if these sorts of vignette questions are helpful or if there's any other LCSW test prep videos you'd like to see. Again, I have a lot more information and much more content on my social work study with Melissa LCSW test prep program available at my website and in the description box down below. Until next time, managing mental health matters.